Hi, and welcome to the Archaeological Society of Delaware's Digging Delaware series. Here, I'll be speaking with local archaeologists about their experiences and how they got into archaeology. Today, we're speaking with past president of the Archaeological Society of Delaware, Eric Craig Lukesick. So welcome, Craig. Why don't you give us a little background on who you are and some of your experiences with the ASD? Oh, thank you, Curtis. Yes, um, I worked at the State Historic Preservation Office for 15 years. And in that tenure, I was heavily involved with the Archaeological, Archaeological Society of Delaware and um, with the goal of building the, our program and building the community of the Archaeological Society and that I'm very pleased that Curtis is now president of. Um, so what we, what we came from some difficult times and we slowly built it up by various methods, uh, by, uh, by combining um, the local libraries with our meetings and integrating them into a beneficial symbiotic program for both. And, and with that, we built very strong meeting venues and, and developed chapters. We've uh, also really pushed fieldwork uh, when I first started. In fact, I dug up my own backyard uh, just to get people out and moving. It, uh, I owned a 200-year-old house in Camden, and I was going to put an addition on and I knew there was stuff there. I knew we had some materials there. And in fact, we found what I think is the found, uh, old foundation to the first kitchen, which was, and, and some of the old brick. And it, it had a porch in the back that I didn't know. So that, that's called the pain site. And we did do some interesting testing there. And um, we've done a, a number of projects. And the one that I'm, I'm very proud of is the one at Wildcat or Forest Landing, uh, hopefully. We get an article in that in the bulletin very soon. And in that, we'll be talking about a Quaker uh, owned property that was the, a landing. That's probably the first port or the Do South Dover area in Camden, so Murderkill. Uh, it was very heavily involved in the Underground Railroad. It was the scene for a lot of activities where, where before there were railroads, there were still freedom seekers looking for a way north, and they found it by a shallop or a small boat going out of that landing and went across to New Jersey and other places. And my, my friend and colleague, Robert Krawitz, has beautifully documented all that story. And that will be in the article, too. We'll have some narrative about the abolitionist activities that, that they're heavily involved in. I think it's a wonderful historical high point for Kent County that I'd like to get more attention to. Um, other, other things we've done is, is we've um, worked with, um, well, I've, I've set up the early colonial uh, symposium up in Newcastle. So we started focusing on uh, early colonial archaeology there uh, several years ago. Uh, um, when I started doing that, we, we were copying it from the Jamestown Conference and the Chesapeake. They were very successful at getting a lot of scholars together and working with a lot of uh, different uh, ideas and, and people from both the contract world and academia and always admired what they're doing. So I tried to replicate it up here. In the first couple of years, it was beautiful. We had people coming in from New York City, from New Jersey, and some really great ideas. I think it helped led up to, um, I know Rich Veit uh, did a book on the Delaware Valley, and I'm, I hope this this was a factor in helping that project along. So, um, it was really interesting. I hope we're still doing that. So Craig, in a minute or less, what's some of your current research? Well, I'm still interested in the early colonial period and I've ended up in a place that's just on the back door of St. Mary City over here in Maryland. And uh, we've got uh, the, the uh, ruins of Mattapanai, which was uh, Charles Calvert's governor's palace, uh, which a lot of uh, policy and, and governing occurred from, and I'm trying to figure out ways to stabilize those ruins and to fund some new research. I'm also working at Webster Field, which actually was the St. Inigo's uh, plantation, which is the first uh, Jesuit mission in English North America. Um, and and we, there's been a lot of <clears throat> research there by St. Mary's City and, 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 and Laura Mazur and, and other folks, um, and it's a highly important site. As, as you know, when you look, when you've heard about the, the Georgetown University and their issues with their past of slavery, uh, it occurred there. 
that's where the slaves were. That plantation at St. Indigo's is what was supporting Georgetown at the time. And so this whole, whole situation was right there in, in St. Mary's County, uh, which is extremely important. So I'm trying to figure out um, a ways for, out, for uh, getting our publications out or some outreach. We've got some wonderful research. I'd like to, for it to continue some more. So I'm trying to figure out ways we can do some GPR, fund some GPR work out there, get more people working on it. Now, um, the other thing I'd like to do is find the location of St. Inigo's Fort. It was the second fort that was built at St. Mary City. It was off of Fort Point in the 1640s, and it was there to guard St. Mary City and collect ta taxes, kind of like Fort Ellsborg. It's very similar to our to our expedition, our campaign at Fort Ellsborg that we did, uh, because it's underwater. And so this September, I'll be going out with the IMH again, that's the Institute of Maritime History, and doing some uh, magnetometer testing off of the fort to see if we can find what would have been the submerged remains of the fort. So what I'm gonna key in on are our metal artifacts to start with to see if there's a cluster of artifacts or a debris field, and then work from that point on to see if we actually have it. But it's interesting that uh, I always was, I always used to complain about the poor records that we had in Delaware for the early uh, period, the 17th century, but oh my, it's just so much more spotty over on, on in Maryland sometimes. There's hardly any references to this fort, though it was a major uh, governmental center in the early co colony. So we've got some projects that we'll be doing soon, uh, this fall, I hope, uh, and, that, and that should be a really interesting undertaking. So, Craig, what's one of the coolest things that you've ever learned from an archaeological project? It just happened. Uh, we've been, um, when I was in Delaware, I think one of the, my key interests were to get something going on at Fort Casimir. In fact, uh, the Secretary of State, through the Division of Historical and Cultural Affairs, funded uh, the first work at Fort Casimir. We actually established it and, and, and uh, verified Ned Hyde's earlier work. And then um, the the... Newcastle Historical Society actually got a battlefield grant and um, uh, Wade Katz uh, through South River and uh, Bill Leap Connect uh, and through Dovetail pooled their sources and went out uh, with a campaign to actually find the moat and find some battlefield areas of the fort. And in fact, the ASD, which I'm very proud of, um, flew over um, a uh, uh, an archaeologist from the Netherlands, Hans van Hesting, Vesting, that I met over there earlier on a fort conference, and he's the expert on Dutch forts. And so we're working at Fort Casimir, and yes, indeed, we did actually find the trace or the outline of the fort and the ditches of it. And so I would say that's a really big high point for me to finally get that project going and seeing some results. Yeah, and some of the results from that were were. Mm -hmm pretty amazing thing compared to what we thought we would find. There was just so much out there. So it was a yeah. project. Yeah, and Hans was saying that um, the artifacts were, were richer than they should have been. That he's, he's worked on forts in Indonesia and South America and, and Dutch forts of this period. And they really didn't have much, uh, and their material culture it was really pretty basic. And there was a lot more there than he expected, which is really interesting because when you go back and you read the records, uh, the actual historical records of, of, uh, of uh, New Amstel, they're like hanging on by their nails. It's, it's pretty miserable. Um, their starvation's kind of at the door and they're doing everything they can just to, just to hang on. Um, so it was, it was really tough at some times and to see that they, the material culture was more richer than expected is, is kind of a, a, new, a new astounding look at the whole situation. So Craig, what's one of your best or worst field stories? Well, I, I have to go back to Fort Casimir. Uh, our recent uh, campaign last year and in 12, um, it was a wonderful experience in getting a lot of people from our, our community together. Uh, we were out in the field with, with Hans van Hesting from the Netherlands, the, the 
the archaeologist who specializes in, in, fort in uh, 17th century fortifications around the world. And we're out with Wade Katz and Bill Lee Connect and the Fahrenbox and Dave Orr and, and Lou Anne DeCunzo and, and Jay. Um, we're all out there together working on this project of something that we always, all of us wanted to do. So it was finally, uh, it was wonderful to be together at that one place working together with yeah. each other. Yeah, it was definitely an archaeologist who's who out there. Uh, I think just about every archaeologist in the state was out there at one point. Yes, yes. And, and, and as, as they said, it's the, it's the founding point of Delaware history. So our last question for you is, how are you coping with COVID right now? Oh, very well, thanks. Um, we're really lucky and that both Francis and I can telework. And so we are, are staying in our house, our underground house that's in the woods. Um, and uh, we're working from home and we just go out for food now and then and we're doing quite well. Um, yeah. Yeah, we do miss seeing other people, but we're archaeologists, so we're kind of introverts, you know. <laughs> I mean, we're all naturally introverts, so you know, we all have all, all kinds of projects we're doing. Well, Craig, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure talking to you again. Thank you, Curtis. It was de definitely my, my pleasure, and uh, I'm so glad you are now the president. <laughs> well, In many ways. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone, for joining us, and we'll see you next time.